Hello and welcome to another live edition of the Cyclone Insider mm-hmm. Podcast and live stream. I'm Travis Hines. He's Randy Peterson coming to you on Thursday afternoon, talking some Iowa State football. The Cyclones host Texas on Saturday night, the seventh ranked Longhorns, and Iowa State will kick off seven o'clock Saturday night, Fox, Jack Tri Stadium. Randy, Iowa State, I think, has consistently been a about a touchdown underdog heading into this game. Uh, they are in a uh, tie for second place. They are bowl eligible. Seems like whatever happens next for Iowa State, in my mind, is is gravy. I mean, they, they, they've cleared the bar of six wins. They are in the hunt for the Big 12 title game into the last two weeks of the year. For this young group, with the gambling probe over the summer, costing them five starters, Whatever they achieve from here is extra, right? It's a bonus. This is what it seems like to me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, anybody that that figured Iowa State would would be in in bowl, um, it had the had the qualifying number to to play in a bowl with two games remaining. I think that was. I mean, Iowa State's had better teams than this, and have they've not been bowl game have have two game luxury like that, but. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's now gravy, like you like you said. Um, I, I, I look at it like this: if Iowa State <clears throat> can can beat Kansas or can beat um, Texas, Matt Campbell's Big Twelve Coach of the Year, and then we move on from there. But um, yeah, and then and then the, the Kansas State game coming up, and the, the, there's there's all kinds of possibilities to be what happens if they're two and zero. But for Iowa State to be to be where they are with, like you said, with a first year starting quarterback with so many, with more freshmen starting than seniors, freshmen and redshirt freshmen starting than seniors. Yeah. This has been a pretty phenomenal, um, um, pretty phenomenal story. And to be quite honest with you, in my mind, Iowa state is fun to watch again. It's fun to watch it's fun to watch the games again. Last year, it, it was it was it was agony, but but this year, except for okay, except for the Ohio game, it's 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 fun to watch. Yeah, certainly everybody involved deserves a ton of credit for the turnaround, not only from last year, not only from the gambling probe, but from Ohio just two months ago now, that third game of the year where. That was as bad as I think it's ever gotten under Matt Campbell, you know, not, you know, first year excluded given what he inherited there. And now they're, they're playing really good football. I mean, I don't think this is a great team. I think this is a team that very much deserves to be in the mix for the second place spot in the big 12. I don't think they're the second best team in the league, but I think certainly they're within shouting distance of where I think, where they are in the standings at five and two makes a lot of sense. And it'll be interesting to see how they handle Texas, which with Oklahoma had seemingly been, you know, above the fray in the league. Obviously some of the luster has worn off with the Sooners and Texas isn't playing great football right now, but you know, everybody else, I think Iowa state's right there. And it'll be interesting to see against Texas. Can they compete better than they did against Oklahoma? Can they, show that they're closer to Texas than we would have otherwise thought. To me, that's probably the measuring stick here. Obviously, winning for them is the goal. But as I go into this game to try to evaluate where Iowa State stacks up, I think that, to me, is going to be where I'm looking. Do they look like they're playing the same sport as as Texas? Because we've seen Iowa State, you know, when they've played these you know top 10 teams before, sometimes they don't look – like they're playing the same sport. I think that has mostly gone away in the last few years, obviously, but are they within shouting distance in physicality, in speed, in talent? To me, that'll be really interesting to watch. And if they can pull off the upset, then it's, okay, what are the scenarios to get you into the Big 12 title game? I'm not quite there yet to go into the deep dive, uh, given how difficult the schedule is for Iowa State with Texas this week and at K-State next week, but – if Iowa State's able to pull it off, I think they deserve the chance to go into that game, that final game Thanksgiving weekend, with a chance to make it to Arlington because they would have earned it at that point. 
Yeah, um, yeah, you're it's you're wise and not trying to figure it out right now. I mean, I've seen people try to figure it out, but the Big Twelve tiebreaker system is so convoluted, is so ridiculous that uh, um, it's already been cha- tweaked once or twice this week. Clarified, um, I think the league would like you to say. Okay, it's already been clarified. <laughs> it's already been tweaked. It's already been tweaked once or twice this week. Um, yeah, so I mean, clearly the Big Twelve is flying by the seat of its pants on that. Which, they, well, they, to be fair, they've been negotiating this WWE deal. So what I was tie, just the, the tiebreaker exactly WWE. Was <laughs> you took that right out of my mouth. You, you got to be quick around here. <laughs> we've been around each other too long, dude. Um, yeah, yeah, they've been negotiating the WWE, and they and they they've had too much time doing that to to um, get yeah get the officiating right on the field and get the playoff playoff calculator, whatever they want to call it, the 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 tiebreaker system corrected. But uh, yeah, to your point, to your point, there's my editorializing for the day. To your point, um, yeah, th- this is I it, it's it's not. To the point where Iowa State controls its own destiny, but in a way, Iowa State controls part of its destiny because Iowa State's destiny is not going to be the Big Twelve championship game if it doesn't go two and zero. So yeah, I mean, Iowa State. That you made a great point, Travis, and you said that is Iowa State playing the same sport? And yes, we have seen in in years past where Iowa State is not playing the same sport as Texas or Oklahoma. But um, as you as you stated so well that that. Yeah, they are now. They are now. And we'll see. We'll see what can put, if anything, can put them over the top on Saturday night. And that's going to have to start with with um, with Rocco, obviously, somehow. And somehow Iowa State's going to have to get a few chunk yards against maybe a, a against a very good rush defense. And the, to me, where the Iowa State has the edges in the secondary, um, if they can if they can can do something, um, you know, can, to get Quinn Ewers off his off his um, off his mark a little bit. It's got a real shot. I, I really think so because now we're not now Iowa State fans don't have to be don't have to be holding their breath if it goes down to a one possession game because knock on wood Iowa State's got a kicker. So um, yeah, I, I I think Iowa State's got a got a great chance um, um, Friday or Saturday night, and the crowd's going to be jacked senior night. Um, I'll be, I'm sure they'll have the fireworks blaring out. So yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be fun again. You mentioned the, uh, the secondary Jeremiah Cooper may or may not play kind of heard the same version of this from Campbell the last three weeks, although he was maybe a little bit more, uh, clear in saying that Cooper was on the path to play on Saturday. Take that for what it's worth, given Campbell and injuries, and it certainly would not uh, be unheard of for him to just be saying things to make Texas think that Jeremiah Cooper would play, even if he's not, especially considering how much we've seen opposing offenses immediately attack that spot when he's not on the field uh, because of injury. Without Cooper, I worry about that Iowa State secondary with them. I think it's the strength that you talked about, and you know we'll see, uh, you know, probably about five or six o'clock on Saturday if Cooper is going to play. And that that's the other thing here is that he's gone through warm-up or he went through warm-ups on Saturday this last week at BYU and did not play. It's pretty atypical for a player to make a trip, get dressed in pads for the whole game and not play. So I would tend to think that Cooper was pretty close, but I also, again, wouldn't put it past Iowa State to be playing some games uh, with his availability. And this is one of those situations where I think they would do that because there is a drop off there. Okay. Jamison Patton intercepted a pass um, last, whatever, last Saturday. With, with about two minutes left in a 30 point game. Exactly. It, from a, I don't even, I don't even know who the quarterback was, but I assume it wasn't Red's laugh. Um, yes, exactly. But, but good for, good for Jamo. He, he caught the, he, he intercepted a pass and returned at 30, whatever, 30 yards or so. But um, yeah, it, it's uh They've, they've certainly picked on 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 that position. So Jeremiah Cooper is a is a big factor back there. Maybe the biggest factor as far as the secondary is concerned on Saturday because because it's a good secondary. What do they have? 17, 15, 16, 17 interceptions. Um, and yours certainly isn't isn't uh, isn't mobile. 
So I think I think this is a pretty good matchup for Iowa State. Somebody people have been asking, will Iowa State put the pressure on on Ewers? And Iowa State's not really a big pressure team anyway in that in that respect. So I think Iowa State will probably play it pretty close to the vest, like they have in the past, and 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 pick up that slack in the in the in the secondary. But that that to me that's the the biggest part of the game. And like I said, Iowa State needs to get some chunk yards also because they're not going to rush the ball great, but they need to get you know a, a few a few yards at least. You mentioned if Iowa State wins, you think Campbell is the coach of the year in the yeah. Big 12, and I don't think I disagree. I think a couple of weeks ago you wrote that this could be Matt Campbell's best coaching job. Mm-hmm. I think 2020, not only for the success, but given how they had to navigate all the COVID restrictions, still stands out as his best job to me. They win on Saturday, and they go into K-State with a chance to make the Big 12 title game. I, I think you start to have a conversation there, at least on my end, of is does this supersede 2020 in terms of what they've overcome? I don't know that they can get there, but I think if they win Saturday against a top 10 team with a pretty direct path to the college football playoff, I, I think that you, you can legitimately start to have that conversation um, without – caveating anything too much there because uh, it would be pretty remarkable considering where they came from to where they would be at that situation. I, I would anticipate Texas winning on Saturday, yeah. but certainly I do think it's probably going to be a pretty closely contested game uh, on Saturday night is kind of my feel for this game. Yeah. Texas, let's not forget that the, the Texas still has, has a great shot at, at being in the college football playoffs. I mean, they're, a lot of things can still happen in the in the in the remaining um, two weeks of the season. Plus, plus now in the in the conference championship games. So, so Texas still has has a lot on the line. Texas also has a true freshman running back because they're 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 number one running back who was a thousand yard rusher already. He's he's out. Um, let's not forget that either. So the. If I if if I don't know how things could line up any better for for Iowa State, um, in the in the in this game they're playing they're at the top of their game right now, um, and they're playing a team that that obviously is 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 uh, has more on its has more uh, more of a goal than just winning the Big Twelve Conference Championship. So I, I think this I think it's got the potential to be like you said to be. A, a a great game, and I think it could be a very entertaining game as well. As a uh, founding member of Team Trash Talk, I would be remiss if I didn't at least read Jared Hufford's quotes from Tuesday yeah. about <laughs> Texas and, and get your reaction, Randy. Yeah. Here's Jared Hufford, Iowa State's senior offensive lineman, talking about Texas. They're going to come in here on senior night in the dark. I don't really think they know what is going to be coming for them. They'll have to figure it out. They'll have to come out and figure it out. We have a distaste in our mouth for them. Definitely want to send them off to the SEC with a loss on our end. Ever since I got here, it was Iowa and Texas. That was kind of the thing. The horns down all the time. That program, much like Oklahoma, they get all the five-star recruits. They have the nicest stuff in the world, and they think that they don't stink. They're just humans, and that's how I see them. (laughs) They're just people that have such a high ego that needs to be checked. I think you left out a word there, didn't you? (laughs) There were there uh, something he said, about- he said that that they don't stink. I think he self-edited there. Yeah, okay, okay, I got you. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was sorry I missed that. I was talking to Rocco or something at that point in time. But yeah, um I don't know where I don't know where to start start with that. I, I do you think Campbell rolled his eyes when he saw that? I don't. I do not. No, well, and like as it was happening, Jared Hufford, I mean, we've spoken to him yeah. you know plenty of times over the years. Not exactly the most boastful, most trash talking player on that team or that we've ever encountered. Um, so it felt very, it felt like he showed up with something to say and he, he got the chance to say it. Well, um, I, I, and, and like, who cares? Let like talk, all talk, all exactly. your, junk. I love talk it. all your junk. And let's not forget that. Yeah. But that, that question was posed, I think with the hope, not, not posed by anybody in the print media was posed by, Okay, I okay, I, I caught the beginning of that. Okay, I caught the beginning of that then. When, uh, Freund just asked Mark Freund, our colleague from WHO, asked yeah. the the thoughts with them leaving, and 
that was when he said the distaste part. And I said, could you follow up on that? What well, you of course you're going to ask him to follow up on it. Yeah, he was already he was already into it. Yes. Like I said, I think he wanted to say something. You just gave him an opportunity. Yeah, oh, that's, that's true. Yeah. And and good enough for him. Um, I mean, he just told the truth, by the way. He, like that, that's, exactly that's what, what they saying. think. That's what the rest of the league thinks. And to one degree or another, that's what Texas is. And, and it's probably I, I a little think, overblown, but you I know, think that, Campbell he told probably high fived him. I think Campbell probably high fived him. I think, <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I think, I think that was great. Um, I got to think Campbell was, was, maybe a trash talker back in his days at Mount Union. Um, I know we don't get that, get that opinion, get that impression now, but um, I, 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 I laugh and I'm kind of digressing here, but I laughed and I, towards the end of the press conference last Tuesday, Campbell said something about he, about um, he's been able to, you know, his team has been able to keep an even keel, um, you know, not being real demonstrative, not demonstrative on the sidelines. And then as Campbell was walking off the off the podium, I I I, I um, challenged him on that because Campbell is as demonstrative this year as I've seen him. Maybe not totally since 2020. Yeah, since 2020. Yes, for sure. Um, but I think I think Campbell likes that fire. I I, I do. Um, well, and I think he's big on deserved and earned and yeah. if somebody's going to have the uh, earn and deserved it's going to be a fifth or sixth year offensive line interior offensive lineman like and and let's not those let's dudes not, earn everything they get and if somebody you know if Rocco Beck would have done it probably not thrilled about her, it if yeah Arcadius exactly. Norton did it probably not wild about yeah. it if you know one of the other younger you know less uh guys that have done it on the field would have done it different deal Jared Hufford does it you know the dude gets to say what he wants I I agree, and and we don't know exactly what goes on on the field, like in in past Iowa State Texas games. But I suspect there's there's been a certain amount of 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 um, Texas players giving the giving the uh, um, um, opinion to other players that giving giving but giving the notion that that yeah they are their stuff doesn't stink. Absolutely, and there's nothing wrong with that either. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You don't, you don't think that they're, they're going to go swimming with the sharks in next year, and you don't think they don't do that in the SEC? Oh my gosh, of course they do. So I don't see anything wrong with that. College football needs more of that. Or college basketball needs more of that, um, in my estimation. As long as it doesn't lead to anything, um, you know, Draymond Green like, they they need. They need stuff like that. They need to liven up the, the sports a little bit, and, and nothing wrong with that. More trash talking, less headlocking. Heard it here first from Randy Peterson on the Cyclone Insider podcast and live yeah. stream. I think that's about all we've got for today. Iowa State, Texas, 7 p.m., Fox, Jack Trice Stadium, senior night, Iowa State's final home game of a successful 2023 season. And then uh, I will be – I don't know, Ranger, you're going to the game on Sunday as well. The men play at yeah. Coliseum at noon on Sunday in their last game before heading to Orlando in the ESPN Events Invitational, the very prestigiously and lazily named ESPN Events Invitational. Uh, so be sure to check out DesMoinesRegistered.com for all the coverage of Iowa State sports you could possibly ever hope for or imagine. He's Randy. I'm Travis. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you.